Um, so today I'd like to introduce a new task force. This is within ELSO called ECMO Ed. And basically the goal of this task force is to try and collaborate and standardize ECMO education internationally. So I'm going to give you guys a picture of what we've been planning and hoping to do if, uh, coming for the future. I have no disclosures. I would like to thank Velia for helping me with preparation of my slides. So the outline, I'm going to discuss the need for why we think uh, we need an international collaborative approach. I will introduce ECMO Ed, and then I'll discuss some of the work groups and projects that we have underway. So first, um, ELSO, there, if you look at the ELSO website, the vision statement, um, basically their goal is to be the premier organization providing education and training and research and data management throughout the world. Um, so education training is really a primary responsibility and goal for ELSO. Um, and this is across all five ELSO chapters. There's been recently an explosion in the number of ECMO centers worldwide. I mean, just a dramatic increase over the past decade. Um, this is good, but what comes with this is that there's a variation in terms of ECMO education and ECMO practice. Unfortunately, because of this, we also have the silo model of ECMO education and practice. So we have five ELSO chapters, but at the same time, each chapter has been working by themselves. There's very little communication and collaboration among the chapters, um, and so training has developed independently. What we think is needed is for key members from these chapters to come together to discuss what's needed across the chapters and identify opportunities for a collaborative uh, approach and standardization of ECMO education. And so this is really what has led to the birth of ECMO Ed. So ECMO Ed is basically um, an international task force. We have members from all five chapters. We have a multidisciplinary uh, group. And the goal is to be able to standardize ECMO education. So this is a picture from the first uh, inaugural meeting um, in April last year in Santiago. In terms of the distribution, we have managed to invite a great group of people. We have excellent representation from all five chapters, which we think is important in order to be able to take into account local differences and variations in practice. And more importantly is we have good representation from all the disciplines involved in ECMO care. As I'm sure you all know, ECMO is a team sport. Um, we have uh, physicians, we have nursing, perfusion, RT, simulation experts, and so we have good representation from all, all the disciplines. The task that was put forth to the ECMO Ed group is to identify international ECMO educational needs, and subsequently to try and outline the mechanisms needed for standardization and international collaboration. In terms of, in order, in order to do this, we created seven work groups that we thought were of primary importance. Uh, there are curriculum, courses, workshops, endorsement, certification, online education, and research. Uh, so I would like to just give a brief overview of these seven work groups. So first, uh, this task force really is the brainchild of uh, Marco Guino, um, and then Rodrigo and I have been able to help organize and support the different teams. First, I'd like to introduce the most urgent need um, in, in ECMO education, and that is the curriculum work group. So ECMO education varies widely. The minimal competency criteria for providing ECMO care has not been defined, even though we've been doing this for over a decade. Um, and this, so basically this work group was created to try and define both the knowledge and the hands-on curriculum. This is the proposed mechanism. First, we'll come up with a curriculum with learning objectives. We felt that ECMO, because it's so hands-on, you need both a knowledge portion as well as a hands-on portion. They will propose learning objectives and then using a consensus methodology such as the Delphi method uh, with an, uh, an expert panel, will agree on what we think are the minimum criteria needed to provide ECMO care. Subsequently, assessment tools will be developed, one for the knowledge portion, one for the hands-on portion. And after validation and publication, this is something that we hope we can subsequently apply. And this is important because this will come into play in when we talk about ECMO certification. So in terms of, I said this is probably the most needed of the work groups, and the reason is it really forms the foundational component of other work groups. You need a curriculum in order to be able to provide ECMO courses, to be able to provide endorsement, uh, to be able to have a certification process, as well as to develop online education. So we need to do this right. We're doing it in an academic and rigorous manner 
in order that it may be uh, uh, accepted across uh, internationally. So once you have the learning objectives defined, um, you need a program or, or a vehicle to be able to develop, to deliver the curriculum. And so this is what we talk about with an ECMO courses. At this point, there's a great variation in terms of the quality and content of these ECMO courses. And so we're looking for a way to standardize them and be able to deliver the curriculum in an effective manner. So this group, they're defining course standards, setting uh, course metrics, um, as well as developing a method to assess these courses. Um, so the courses are gonna develop, are gonna deliver the curriculum. However, the curriculum really isn't everything in ECMO education, there's always more. Um, and so the workshops work group, their, their task is to identify the, the materials necessary to supplement the courses. One example of this is something that we recently developed in North America, which is the cannulation workshop. And this will be um, something that we are ongoing. Uh, the reason I'm highlighting this one is because this was an international collaborative workshop. So the Hong Kong team has been doing this for years. And they do a fantastic job. They have a terrific uh, high fidelity simulation model. And they came, shared their model with us, trained us, and now we're able to, to uh, offer this course to North America. So this is a nice example of what a collaborative approach across the five chapters can, can lead to. The endorsement work group is something that's been growing rapidly. So as I said, there's many ECMO courses throughout the world and there's variation in terms of the content and the quality. Um, because of this, many of these organizations are reaching out to ELSO in order to come assess their course and, and uh, provide endorsement for their course. This is good for us because it allows us to expand our reach. We now have courses around the world um, and at the same time ensure a certain quality is met with these courses. Um, so this work group is defining the endorsement criteria and then going out and assessing multiple courses. The certification work group, this is uh, probably one of the hot topics and um, can even be considered sort of the holy grail of ECMO education. So as ECMO provision has exploded worldwide, there is a demand uh, coming from, from the five chapters to be able to say, this is someone who's certified to provide ECMO and this is someone who's not certified. At this point, it, that, that doesn't exist. In order for this to happen though, we need a curriculum, courses developed, and a way to validate and assess uh, the, these uh, curriculum uh, tools. And so this group is outlining the process for assessment and certification. They're developing a knowledge assessment tool and also developing a hands-on assessment tool. Um, online education, we think this is the new standard for education. Um, I think if we are to have an impact, we have to have a, a strong online presence. Um, online education, of course, expands our reach. If you're on the World Wide Web and you have a, a good course, you can offer edu ECMO education internationally. Um, so this group is developing online course components and modules and then integrating it into a learning management system. Um, the benefit of online modules is allows for specialized schematics and animations and also can provide an interactive method for learning ECMO education. So very different from what we typically do, the didactic lecture uh, method. Where does online education fit? As I mentioned, this will depend on having a rigorously developed curriculum. But once that's complete, online education can really be uh, complementary to the typical courses that we provide. Um, it'll be a necessary component of ECMO certification and also allow for research into the effectiveness of ECMO education and that it's improving clinical outcomes. And so finally, and this leads into the research. So we feel that with the recommendations coming out of ECMO Ed, there is, uh, it behooves us to study the impact of these recommendations. And so the research work group is developing on, uh, educational research tools to assess the efficacy by which our uh, recommendations uh, are having. So putting this all together. So this is the traditional learning method. So you're in the classroom, someone's talking to you and lecturing, and you lose focus. It's not very effective, it doesn't allow for individualized learning, and unfortunately it's difficult to engage learners and ensure that their, the objectives are being met. And so you lose your learner and they go do something more fun. What we'd like to do is to provide an online educational tool that promotes self-directed learning, asynchronous learning, as well as inter an opportunity for interaction. So online education, you learn the knowledge component, and once that's complete, you're able to go out into the real world, 
um, attend one of our endorsed courses for the hands-on component. Subsequently, you would sit and take a, your certification exam. This would be both knowledge and hands-on. And once you pass, you become a world expert in ECMO uh, as an ECMO practitioner. So this really is the goal. Um, through international collaborative efforts and standardization of ECMO education worldwide, we hope we can elevate the quality of ECMO care delivered worldwide. I'd be happy to take any questions. If there's no questions, I'd just like to promote our social media. Um, so we're online, multiple social media platforms. Um, just search for ECMO Ed, follow us, um, and hopefully we'll have good news uh, and, and uh, projects to share with you in the future.